Hello folks, the Celtic Nerd here bringing you another nerdy video. Alright, this video is talking about Percy Jackson and the Olympians episode 2. I become Lord, I become Supreme Lord of the bathroom. Okay, so. Uh, in my previous video, uh, as I, okay, in my previous video, I talked about how there was a controversial moment in this, um, in this episode, and then there was also, I had concerns about them sort of rushing through things. I've, uh, let's see, and also by my guess, uh, they would cover the next uh, four chapters. That seems to be the pattern, which I'm not gonna lie, has me concerned because how should I put this? The book, t uh, the audio book, uh, takes ten hours. Now that is twenty-one minutes for opening and twenty-eight seconds for the outro. So again, just keeping that in mind, folks. So, this besides from that, roughly just under one minute, it takes ten hours for um for a person who's a pretty talented voice actor, I will say, um, to narrate the Percy Jackson book. Now, again, that is him giving the descriptions that we normally don't see. So keep that in mind. The book is, you know, telling us, you know, how they're moving and all that. So keep that in mind. So it is significantly short if you take out the descriptions compared to the thing. I will say, the book quickly glosses over Percy's time at camp. He's very much quickly sent on his way. Um, in the book, uh, Percy uh, is brought to Camp Half Blood. He wakes up uh, to see Grover. He's he's told about how ambrosia works, how it's a how it's a type of food that will heal demigods, but if they consume too much of it, they it will it can lead to problems which you know and also how it tastes different uh grover is the one that normally gives him the tour of the camp and he explains the the tw uh, the um, the 12 cabins with the with that how hades doesn't have a cabin there and uh there are two cabins there that are just honorary uh that being herod the goddess of marriage and unions who is one of the few Greek gods in mythology to not actually sire any demigods or have any scandalous affairs. However, Hera was a big bitch in Greek mythology. How she would often kill and punish uh, the demigods and the women who are connected to Zeus. So yeah, Hera is a terrible. It's she's one. Of the, she is one of the worst deities in Greek mythology, just because of how she punishes uh, those that whose fault it, it's not really their fault. Like her torment of Heracles and his mother, and the fact that Heracles' mom even tried to honor Hera by naming Heracles after her. Until the Romans changed, uh, the Romans and the Disney changed it to Hercules. But anyway, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that Grover is normally when it goes over that. There's also a long discussion about whether or not the gods exist and whatnot. That is normally done by Dionysus and Chiron. In this, it's a little different. Um. Some other key differences is Annabeth's introduction to Percy. They normally have a bit more discussion. Uh, Luke, I liked the, uh, by the way, the casting choice is amazing. I'm loving the casting choice. Everyone is fantastic. Um, 
the cab we get a bit more of a better description of some of the cabins in this um in this moment in the book for example uh we hear about how festus's cabin looks more like it's a warehouse with chimney stacks and lots of metal work going on and how the Ares cabin is has like a boar's head uh, hanging above the door and how it looks like it's splattered in blood and how there's even heavy metal music coming from inside so like we get different descriptions of all the different cabins all the cabins are completely unique to this god in the show the cabins pretty much look the same they all look like temples um like they're they're very uniform except in their color that's about it uh i wa i am a bit disappointed in that i wish they didn't do that but anyway um let's see what else um oh yeah they gloss over percy's um uh, training in the book it's it's he he has like one or two lines in the book where he talks about like how he's not really good at anything except so um like he's 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 not super bad but he's not terrible at things like he's he's sort of like in the middle so uh it is believed that he is a son of hermes one of the jack of all trade gods who are just they're, they're, they're sort of good at like at stuff but they're not like exceptional um so they sort of gloss over that um they also gloss over his training with luke see in the book luke uh the the head of uh the hermes cabin uh teaches because again each cabin head is this each counselor is you know the head of the cabin and they're the ones that dictate the training that the cabin goes through so like luke's in charge of leading the uh, hermes cabin and all their drills archery canoeing he's the one who decides what they study and you know how they study it and how long so so luke is the one that t takes is supposed to take them through sword training and that's where um percy sort of learns he has a somewhat talent for except none of the swords feel right in his hand they like they and they even use like you think uh, a number five should work you know like and as a, a number five uh, sized uh, sword should work for percy so um n like none of the weapons are supposed to feel right for percy and we eventually get and when percy first gets his anachronismos in the book that's when Chiron reveals like why Anacrismos uh, feels right uh, in person when he first used it against uh, Mrs. Dodds. But no, Percy has an Atlas Moss after the very beginning. He we don't actually see him use it in this, even though he gets into a fight. So I'm surprised by that. Also, uh, they do draw out the dinner scene. And I actually really enjoyed it. Uh, I like how there's another character talk like that's always there. There's another character uh, with Luke who's sort of like showing Percy the ropes. I really enjoyed that. Um, we see Percy attempt archery, uh, <laughs> and that's about it. Again, I wish. Uh, again, they're sort of like stretching things out. They give a different explanation on what on how Percy realizes the truth about his mother. I'm a little disappointed by that. Uh, let's see. Oh, they completely removed uh, him seeing the oracle. I. I don't know if that's going to be in the next episode. Uh, typically, after each after credit scene, we see a brief glimpse of the next episode. So I don't know, but yeah, we have not seen the Oracle yet, uh, which is very important because again, it's, trust me, it is. <sighs> Sorry, folks. Um, Sorry, it's um very tired. Um, 
but yeah, no, they do expand the scene though with Percy. Like he even uh, tries to contact his mother. Now again, I need to say all these changes have been approved by Rick Riordan. He's the one who wrote the episode, and he's the executive producer. Uh, well, he's one of the executive producers of this uh, series. And again, he is the creator of the Percy Jackson books. So if he says something, if he says these changes are okay, we're not, it's not us to completely judge them, okay? Now, obviously, as fans, we can decide whether or not we like these changes or not. So I'm completely okay with these changes. Um, so, now, the big thing capture the flag. Um. Now this is the this is one of the more important scenes. Uh, actually, you know, you, you know, what? I want to touch on it first before we talk about capture the flag, the controversial thing. Now, <sighs> sorry, folks. I'm just trying to trying to start this off. Okay. So there was a big controversial moment during the production of Percy Jackson when Rick Riordan tweeted, "Who is the bit? Who is the Golden Trio? Who's going to be playing the Golden Trio uh, for the show?" Ever, uh, the internet, and I would like to say the more ignorant or the attention-seeking members of the internet, lost their complete shit. Because of an of the actress that was chosen to play, um, Annabeth. Now they people tore into that because they're like Annabeth, because like Annabeth's supposed to be white, you know, all that bullshit. Like it's here's the thing, Annabeth is a demigod. Her parents, like, there now there is some uniformity in terms of the demigods and their parents due to the fact that their one of their parents is a god. There's there tends to be some uh, common factor because the god some of the gods do have preferred appearances. Now, the only you know, like one like okay. The, the one of the big unifying factors now and this gets harped on a lot in this book um, there's a chapter huh, where this becomes like no this description is extremely important now this description is what is referenced most a lot every other like every now and then if they mention something about her parents it's it's generally just a toss away thing like for example, Percy noticing like, oh, I know, I just noticed, um, you know, the, the color, uh, sorry, the shine of her hair as she puts on the Yankee cap, like something like that. It's a, it's a very quick throwaway line. However, now the this, the description of her eyes gets focused on quite a lot. In we visit the garden gnome emporium. Her eyes are repeatedly referenced in that. They are very important uh, to the antagonist of that chapter. I don't want to go into too, too many details, but the antagonist is very is like they constantly like your pretty eyes, your pretty eyes, you know, because apparently they're the eyes of her mother, and Percy even acknowledges that later down the line when he meets uh, Annabeth's mother. That they have the same eyes. It's more the eyes that's important uh, in terms of Annabeth's description. Everything else is just, you know, whatever to paint a picture in your head. So, like Annabeth's skin color is not important. It's her eye color. It's her eyes that are important and her intelligence. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I I am not. I don't give two shits who they cast for Annabeth. If Rick Ryder, if, if Rick Riordan says they got they 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 are Annabeth, or like they are Annabeth, uh, okay. That being said, okay, so technically there is a limit. There there should be limits on that type of stuff. For example, uh, having Annabeth be, um, 
see, I have to say, what I'm about to say is part of the limits, and it's part, and it is a big spoiler, so big spoiler, massive spoiler alert, you have been warned, big spoiler alert, incoming, okay, now that Israel's, now that the warning is done, oh, I can get on with it, okay, Annabeth and Percy end up together, so, if for pure if they change Annabeth to be gay or a lesbian or a, m a member of the I always mess up the acronym the LGBTQ plus community um, where she where she, uh, they're biologically male but then they identify as female that would be going too far because again the, the book has has them getting together and whatnot and if Percy was still a male like you see there are limits of you know that you have you can you should go with uh changing the character uh because again the series ends with them end up as, uh, ending up as a couple and to our knowledge even to the most recent books they're still together and the uh a big a big thing part of uh the heroes of the olympus story is Percy and Annabeth are constantly thinking about their futures together. Like, is it going to be really? Are they are they going to be really safe? Where can they? Where could two demigods live together that is safe? You know, it's a big thing that's going on in their minds. So that type of change would be a big no. I don't care if Rick Riordan approved it, uh, because like that that's that is such a change in character. That is such a drastic change in character. Now. That being said, cast and Annabeth are uh, like they they could choose an, uh, a person from Asia to cast Annabeth, and as long as they get as long as the eyes are the important bit, I don't I don't give two fucks, <laughs> you know. I I honestly don't care about Annabeth's skin color or race. It's more so the gender of the character and their um, relationships that I care about. Uh, because of the way the book is set up um, but you know the actress that you got to cast Annabeth love her and I love the uh, the way she is uh, again they're, I feel like they're leaning into the autism bit because yeah they they hype up Annabeth's intelligence she's always thinking six moves ahead apparently and I love that And but the thing is she's sort of like they gave her sort of like socially inept moments where like uh, <laughs> like when per like at the end Percy's injured and he's scared she was invisible and she was there the whole time she was like he was like you were there the whole time she's like yep you why didn't you, uh, and you didn't help yep <laughs> why like she, she's just standing there going yep yep like she's like she doesn't understand like it's like she even has like a yeah of course I didn't help like she has a look of like why would I help you in that fight you know it's it's like a lack of like empathy there and I love it and then she's even like sorry about this and then she just shoves him into the lake like I love it I absolutely love it <laughs> Uh, we haven't seen the the we have we ha she has not used his future iconic nickname for him. Uh, now, mind you, Percy's the, there's only one person Percy allows to call him that nickname, and it's her. Whenever anyone, and this was even before they started. This is even before they became a couple. If when anyone else calls him this nickname, he actually gets mad. But now she gets a pass. She can call him that nickname. But I think the nickname only comes up. Yeah. It only comes up after he's claimed. So yeah, of course we won't actually see the nickname. Uh, speaking of being claimed, uh, oh yeah, sorry. Other changes to capture the flag. Um, Percy was supposed to be on border patrol. He's not exactly on border border patrol. And about sort of leads him somewhere and then just leaves him there. Uh, she's she just puts on her Yankee cap and you know she leaves him somewhere in the woods. Uh, another big change is apparently it's camp wide so like the entire camp now is the battlefield which is sort of interesting 
in the series, sorry, in the books, it's implied that it's just the woods. It's a very specific arena in the woods. Um, th but they use lateral, it's not like an, a natural like arena where there's walls. It's more like you, ca you can go for as far as this location and as far as that location. And, you know, with and whatnot. They use natural landmarks, basically. And another change is Clarice's weapon. Now they hint that it has some magic to it because it's sparking. However, you don't really get its power throughout the ser throughout the fight because it's they sort of gloss over it. I don't know why. Basically, though, this spear is supposed to be electrified, and whenever Percy actually blocks with his shield or his sword, his in the book he describes his his arms are feeling numb. Because, because it's electrified, even his blocks are causing some kind of impact. He's not getting slashed or or stabbed because he's protecting himself and he's defend he's blocking the blows. But because of the electricity element, it's still causing him some kind of pain and whatnot. So that is supposed to be oh my pen. So that is supposed to be transpiring. We don't get that, uh, unfortunately. And it's supposed to be Anna, it's supposed to be Clarice and five Aries. Uh, it's, wait, it's supposed to be five Aries campers, so four extra, and the four extras bully him, um, and she doesn't join in the fight until much later. And it's more in the fight. It's more on accident that he uh, in the show. It's more on accident that he breaks her spear. In the book. When they push him toward into the river, like they like no, I don't see it. I push, uh, I mean they drive him to the river. Like you know, he eventually while is in the river, uh, because he's being pushed back, as uh, from def fine defensively, and then eventually, uh, he gets an adrenaline surge. Everything becomes heightened, and then he starts fighting epically, and he starts you know not he starts beating the other, cam uh, airy campers. And and then eventually he purpose on purpose breaks, um, Clarice's uh spear with his shield, and that pre uh is pretty much the end of the fight. That's when uh, Luke runs over with the Ares flag, and he jumps over the river, and then the flag magically turns into from Ares flag into um. Uh, um, Hermes's fl uh, flag. Uh, so they lot they 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 removed some of the magic. It seems like it's just an ordinary flag, which I'm a bit disappointed. Next is they removed a scene involving a hellhound. Uh, basically, this hound shows up and badly injures uh, Percy. And Annabeth first getting a hint because like he got he gets scratched once during his fight with the Ares cabin, and he and he's healed. And um, Annabeth notices that that cook got healed. She's like, "Huh," but then before she could say anything, that's when the Hellhound shows up, and it badly scratches Percy across his chest. And everyone's like, "Oh my god, what's going to happen?" And Percy even then talks about like how he feels like he. They go into detail on the sound of the claw, the slash made, and how warm and wet his chest feels. So those claws went pretty deep, and Percy was basically bleeding out. He was dying in that moment. And then Annabeth, like they're about to take him away, then Annabeth's not like Annabeth. Then shouts out, "Karen, no, put him in, break, put him into the river." She, because she realized again. I love how. In the book, Annabeth is so fucking smart. I I love it. But yeah, no, they very. She's like, put him into the river. Trust me. And Kyron trusting Annabeth puts him into the puts him into the river, and then he gets healed, and that's when the symbol appears. In the show, uh, he gets scratched quite a lot uh, by the Ares ca uh, campers. And it's more so from uh, the aforementioned push that Adabat gives him into the river that heals him. They completely remove the hellhound. And instead of it being a small top of a, a trident, because it was only the the the, uh, sh the, the, 
the three pointed part of the trident that appeared on per, both Percy's head uh, when he was claimed in this it's the it's a big holographic full on trident and so yeah now again casting casting of this show I love the cast I love also they sort of hinted at Grover's girlfriend she is not officially mentioned to my knowledge until book two or even three so it's a bit surprising that she makes a, 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 such an early appearance in this one but then again Grover is technically 24 um then we uh but yeah uh, her CGI effects pretty good. She looks like a tree, uh, like she's made of wood. In the book, she's described more as a normal human, except uh, different types of hair color and all that type of stuff. So I'm okay with it. Um, the actor they got to play Dionysus, yes, absolutely yes, I loved it. Um, okay, I absolutely loved the actor they played. They got to play Dionysus. Oh, absolutely loved it. Loved it so much. Uh, I love how Dionysus tries to get around his um, punishment from Zeus. Like, this is totally a Dionysus thing. I could see the Dionysus in the book doing this. He, The Dionysus in the show... Per, he, um, oh, my God. Sorry. It's just beautiful. I, you know, I'm not going to say it. Watch it yourselves. Dionysus pulls a big. Oh, I love it. It's hilarious, and I do love how this. I love how the show has its humor. Absolutely love it. Great. Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Very funny. I ca I laughed a lot during this episode. It was very good. Um, but yeah, no. It's your. It's Pimento from Brooklyn Nine Nine. Oh. Absolutely great casting choice. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, I love how in this episode Percy is more focused on finding his dad and like just trying to get his attention. But also, we do get the sense of how he's sort of petty towards his dad because we get that in the book. Like, Percy does not like the gods he does not have, he doesn't have a good opinion of the gods and it gets worse and worse as the as the series goes on and immediately when Percy's told like yeah you're you're needed to save the world you're you need to do something for your dad Percy's like no he ignored me my entire life and now he's only claiming me because he needs me to go do something yeah no that's exactly Percy's attitude in the book he only goes on the quest in originally in the book because he has hopes to save his mother how like which is the same thing as his motivation in the show which I absolutely love now mind you instead of having this as his secret plan uh, as opposed to the way it was in the book it's more so Grover told him like your mom's still alive in the underworld and Percy's like fine I'll go so like it, he's very much more obvious as in this is why he's going on the quest as opposed to in the book where it's he kept that a secret like his secret hope uh, but again we, we don't know if the quest will come the, if the prophecy will come up if the prophecy comes up in the next episode I will talk about it if it doesn't come up I will talk about it and, t and talk about like why the prophecy is so important but yeah no so far first two episodes of Percy Jackson and the Olympians really good it's like the One Piece live action they did remove some stuff it, it, it makes sense of what they removed the and again it doesn't hurt the story like if I'm being honest it does not hurt the story we're, we're getting the broad strokes of the story you know as opposed to every little detail we don't need every little detail we, we have the books we have you know and if you're not a bit if you if you don't have time to read in your busy life you have the audio of the you have the audible of the book so there's because of that there is no reason to have a, a, a an exact copy of the book as live action however 
the changes now that being said the changes that the movie made in terms of the story that is atrocious I cannot abide by that because some of the changes are so drastically different like it's just awful now when this series is over I am going to re-watch the movie and I'm going to do a comparison of the book movie series now I will say one thing I still stand by my position that this would have worked so much better as an animated series because again we have a very short time period of the books to the actor and unfortunately with live action they they have to keep up that pace the reason why we're going to lose some scenes out of this book series is because they have to keep it going very quickly because the actor is aging you know if this was a live action series as long as the voice actor could do the voice they could keep on going how Ever we're dealing with a live action so we need to we need to keep the story we need to keep production going uh, in, uh, until that actor uh, fully ages and there are six books to the Percy Jackson and the Olympian storyline there are five to six books in the Heroes of Olympus and then there is one crossover event in uh, the Kane, uh, Kane Chronicles uh, books uh, Percy shows up uh, apparently once in the trials of Apollo and then that's it I believe he vanishes uh, It's he, he's he gone from the Rickverse as it's referred to as because the, not, unfortunately it's no longer just Percy Jackson because there are several main characters there. the main characters of the Rick Riordan verse are Percy Jackson and Annabeth Grover uh, in terms of Percy Jackson and the Olympians Annabeth Grover Annabeth uh, Annabeth Grover Percy and then in Heroes of the Olympus we get a big roster of um, Percy, Annabeth um, oh, Nico oh, I'm blanking on the characters uh, but no Heroes of the Olympus has a big starring roster it's pretty interesting it starts off with a, a with Three. Uh, the first two books are actually tr uh, gr t groups of three, and then in the third book and forwards, it's actually a large ro uh, leading roster. So yeah, um, the Kane. Then we have Kane, and I guess whatever. I haven't read the Kane Chronicles yet, so whatever other characters team up with Kane uh, in terms of the Egyptian gods. Then we have Trials of the Apollo. So Apollo is the leader of the of that uh, series, and then we have the the Norse god ones, which features I don't know what character. So the, there's a lot of leading characters uh, in the Rickverse, uh, hence why it's now referred to as the Rickverse as opposed to the Percyverse. So uh, I don't think we're going to get all the other books. <laughs> um, albeit, uh, depending on how this series goes. Actually, no. Considering the actor's age, and again, we're dealing with like you know, like live action actors, I would be surprised if we get Heroes of the uh, of Olympus. I think it's okay to do this as a live action series, but I honestly feel like if we're going to get the other books, uh, if this is a big success and Disney wants to continue, I hope that they transition from live action to animated series, so that way they can get a lot more done uh, without having to worry about you know actors aging uh, but hey if they want to model their the animated characters appearance off the live action that's totally fine but yeah no I absolutely so far episode 2 really good I'm really enjoying the series it is definitely a lot better than the movie book is still superior but of course it, it would be other than that great job Disney you're doing a good job with the uh, Percy Jackson and the Olympi Olympians and uh, this is the Celtic Nerd signing out one name one sky <laughs>